uh, lightning talk on uh, fixed point programming. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Henry Blanchett, and I'll be talking about some joint work I'm doing with uh, Michael Adams. Uh, so my research focus is on building tools to help programmers write correct and efficient programs. And today I'll be talking about our ideas for uh, helping Haskell programmers write in uh, fixed point oriented programs. So when you hear fixed point oriented here, think uh, work queue style algorithms. And if that doesn't sound familiar, don't worry about it. Uh, these are a really common style of algorithms and uh, you've definitely seen them or even written them before. So let's uh, walk through an example of how writing in this style works and uh, how transformations over it works. So we'll start with a really simple example, graph distance. So we can define graph distance like this where we have uh, two relations. We have relations that define the uh, edges in our graph and a relation for the distances in our graph. And then we have two inference rules that define how uh, distance is defined in our graph, or how to infer distance. So we can get the distance over edges, and we can use this transitive looking rule to get the distance combining two uh, distances. Okay, so we've got the setup here. How would we write this directly in Haskell? Well, a naive, a naive implementation for computing all the distances in our graph could look like this. So don't worry about reading this code, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna show a lot of code, but I'll highlight the important details. So in an uh, algorithm like this, we have a few important uh, components. We've got the initial distances, which we're gonna initialize to infinity, except for the start, which is zero. We have uh, the next edges to explore next, um, starting with the edges from the starting node. And then we have this loop that's going to process uh, things in the items to visit next and push things onto there when we need to visit new items. And additionally, we have a check here to see if what we just visited actually did an update, which means we have to explore uh, uh, again, the news from there. Of course, though, this is just a naive implementation. It's not very efficient because we might have to visit nodes multiple times. So how could we make it more efficient? Well, we could use a classic, uh, oh, sorry, uh, before I get to that, um, but this is a general scheme of a work queue algorithm. We've got a queue, we've got a loop that's popping and inserting off that queue, and we have some caches uh, that are encoding uh, intermediary, intermediary results that we're computing. Uh, but like I said, this is a naive implementation, so how can we make it more efficient? Well, we could transform this implementation to something that looks like Dexter's algorithm. So for Dexter's algorithm, we're making it more efficient by having now in, uh, a uh, priority queue where we're ordering things by distance from the start uh, to visit next. And then additionally, now we have this cache of visited nodes, so we don't have to revisit a node we've already seen. Okay, so this is all well and good, but this is for a very simple uh, problem, which was graph distance. So uh, what do we have to do to handle something a little bit more complicated in our implementation here? Well, let's extend uh, our graph distance now to something I'm gonna call advanced graph distance, but not really graph distance exactly, but uh, suspend your disbelief for now. Um, so now we're adding a new kind of node in our graph, a multiply node, and how a multiply node works is it's got uh, two input ports, and then the distance to a multiply node is the product of the distances to the input ports encoded by the bottom rule there. And then the setup, the setup for that rule is in the bottom right. Uh, just think about it conceptually. Don't worry about the details too much. Uh, so how would we implement uh, now the same problem that we had before, but handling this new node? Well, we're gonna have to add this new chunk here to handle that case. And you can see our implementation is uh, growing. So you can imagine as well, if we had multiple kinds of nodes and say their rules interacted with each other, this could become uh, quite tedious with lots of different cases that we have to handle. Uh, and additionally, if we want to make this a actually efficient implementation, we could uh, extend it to look like this. And uh, really don't worry about reading this, and it's a huge chunk of code here. But I'll, um, so the important parts here though are that we have a priority queue, which is uh, ordering things, so we visit them in the order of distance from the start. And we've got uh, the same cache of visited nodes like in Dijkstra's, but now we also have this new cache of minimum distances among the input ports to the multiply nodes, so we don't have to recompute them pairwise uh, when we uh, update a distance to an input port. So in order to do this transformation to make this uh, more optimized implementation, we had to basically totally restructure the original implementation you saw way before. 
And uh, that can be quite error prone. Uh, it's also tedious. You have to handle many cases, maybe multiplicatively many, if the rules interact with each other. And additionally, it's quite uh, difficult um, to, to do this properly. And uh, if we wanted to use different optimizations, we would have to throw a lot of this work away to basically totally re-implement it. Um, if we're encoding the data differently or uh, encoding the relations differently, et cetera. Uh, so this is uh, overall um, has some drawbacks to writing things directly in this style. So uh, we have had this situation come up in other areas, though, before. Uh, an example would be parsers. So it's uh, quite tedious and difficult to write parsers by hand sometimes, uh, especially LR parsers. So we've developed tools, for example, parser generators, that take as input a nice specification of the grammar of your language and then turn that into an efficient implementation of a parser for that grammar. So our idea is to do something similar for these styles of algorithms. So for the same kind of problem, uh, we could instead write a description of the rules to compute graph distance just like this, with these two rules, the distance from the start and the distance for an additional edge given a distance to the source of that edge. So uh, just to, for reference, uh, we're using this correspondence of the original mathematical relations that we saw before. Uh, so uh, we could extend it to advanced graph distance to look like this, uh, just adding one more rule to uh, find the distance to a multiply node. Uh, and yeah, so that's how you handle this uh, example problem. But of course, uh, you might be wondering, well, what else could this be useful for? I want to do more than just can be graph distances. So there's many other kinds of problems uh, that uh, can be written in this uh, work queue style of implementation, uh, commonly R. And the common factors here are the shape of the computational dependencies. So in particular, uh, if you're, if uh, you have like an iterative shape of dependencies. That means you're going in a list shape. Uh, if it's uh, recursive, then it's something like a tree. But for these ones, the shape of the computational dependencies really just depends on the type of optimizations and the encodings of data that you're using, which are going to change as you uh, want to change the specification of your algorithm and the uh, decisions about implementation. Uh, I'm going to go a bit quickly here because I'm running out of time. but. Uh, I'm going to briefly introduce what I mean here by fixed point and fixed point oriented programming. So uh, we're working over a bounded semi lattice of knowledge and we're moving up this lattice and we're using these rules to uh, join our current knowledge with new knowledge as we infer it. So we're going to keep going up the lattice as much as we can using our rules and then eventually we get to a point where we can't learn anymore. So that's like an abstract description of what I mean by these fixed point uh, uh, computations. Okay, so we're not the first project in the space. There's some other projects in this emerging paradigm. For example, Datalog, Datafund, and Flix. Um, but in particular, these other projects are implementing as uh, new languages. But our focus is on uh, code generation for Haskell. And in particular, doing optimizations on that translation. So our current steps are moving from uh, what we have currently implemented, which is as a uh, interpreter, to a fully fledged code generator. Um, implementing some case studies and uh, encoding optimizations into that translation. So like I said, we're still early in development uh, and we're here looking for feedback, use cases and collaborators um, and relating to HIW. Uh, for example, there's some fixed point computations in uh, GHC like strictness analysis that would be good places to start for use cases. And if you're interested, uh, you can check out our website or talk to us here at the conference. So thank you for your time and I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>